Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate some drawing letters with a ruling pin. This is a really, really old ruling pin that I bought from a thrift store. Uh, I didn't know how old it was when I bought it, and that's even older now. And um, it was really, really rusted when I got it. And of course, I don't really take care of my pens, so. But it gets the job done, it's pretty sharp. Well, I wouldn't say very sharp, but it has a good point on it. Um, I'm also going to bring that tip pretty close together, almost basically touching. Um, I think this, this pen works better when it is uh, fairly touching. And, but it also depends on the consistency of the ink. Okay, so I've chosen sweetheart as a word and I've already written some of the designs. I think I'm gonna go with something like this. What I'm basing my design off of is this from a style from Herman Killian. And uh, I've just finished Yukimi Anand's Drawn Capitals class. And Herman Killian has some fantastic, uh, spectacular examples. And I'm sure you can find a lot of them on, on Pinterest or online in places. But uh, this is one of the styles that I'll be working off of today. So, here is some um, Arches MBM. I'm going to draw, you can see these lines here, the grooves in the paper. They're about two and a half centimeters, so I think that's about four centimeters. I'm going to try to work maybe even five centimeters. I'm not, I'm not going to even draw guidelines, but I want to work big because when I use the ruling pen, they're going to be pretty thick. The lines are going to be pretty thick, um, and so if I touch up with a little pointed nib or broad edge nib, then this is a browse, I think it's a six. Um, if I touch up with this nib, I can get some really fine lines as well as the texture uh, from the ruling pen. So I'll go ahead and start.
to use is uh, Windsor and Newton, maybe, <laughs> I've forgotten, some kind of green gouache, I don't even know what the color is, but it's just a greenish kind of color, I like it. Uh, as far as the consistency of the ink, well, I think I want it a little bit thicker and uh, have a little more texture. So I'm going to give this a try. I don't want to load up my pen too much. So you can see how if I hold the pen very vertically, I get a really, really thin line and as I steepen the angle and even if I go into a really low angle like this, I can get some really, really thick lines. So I'm going to keep it at a pretty steep angle and then I'm going to build up on that. I don't want to start with the S. It's a very difficult letter for me. Start with this W. I think with the W, I have a few options to bring it to a point or to flatten it off and give it a serif and uh, what I'm going to do is bring it to a point because I, I want to fill up some of that space as well as here so I'm not going to do too many details with this right now I'm just dot dot dotting and I'm going to give the, the edge of the letter a little bit more weight and then I'll come back with a, a, a small a very small edged pen in a moment I could come to a point here or I could come to an, to a flat edge. I think I want to come to a little bit of a angled kind of steep edge like that. Why? I don't know. Do 
choice to choosing that. The serif is too thick. And once it's too thick, it can't go back. So now I'm struggling. It's good not to not to build up too much with the folded or with the ruling pen or a folding pen for that minute. Just to give it a little bit give it what it needs, and then use a smaller edged brush later, or a smaller edged pen. Now I think it's time for this S. I'm going to start at the thicker part of the S in order that I can fix any mistakes. If I need to. And I can join these two together right here and then instead of making a clean join, I can just Join it messily and build up the weight over top of it. This is an advantage of a letterer over a calligrapher. The letterer is expected to fix the mistakes as it goes. 
and the calligrapher is expected to make no mistakes. Otherwise you write it again. Habit of building up too much because I, I keep working on the letter and instead of just letting it go, when I pay too much attention to a letter, I keep touching up. And as I keep touching up, I add more weight and then the letter becomes disproportionately heavy. And so, what I ought to do is spend as little time as necessary on each letter and then take a step back and then go back a little bit more and take a step back otherwise I run the risk of well I'm not going to touch that W because I run the risk of really touching up too much and building up the weight so I'm going to keep the weight of all the strokes as even as possible as I, as I make my first pass. And then later on, I can make a second pass. Because I can't take away any weight. So I've got to be careful. If you have a difficulty with laying down thick lines and you can't seem to control yourself, thicken up the ink a little bit. That will decrease the flow of the ink. Although it makes it more difficult to write, your ink won't be laying down on the paper as quickly. Right now my ink is too thick for my taste. But knowing the mistakes that I make frequently, I'm afraid to add more water. Touch that up too much. What's the best way to build up a letter? Is it to make one, one pass and build up as you go? Or is it better to write the whole entire phrase or word and then add weight? I think everyone has their own style and actually each, each method can produce a different result. Because if you build up after you've already written the letters, it might be difficult to determine where to place your next letter. For instance, if I write the words too close together and then as I build up the wave, you find out the composition begins to break down because you've placed the letters too close together. But if you build up as you go, there's the, the tendency, like I like I expressed about my own situation, to build up too much. Because you're always thinking about whether the letter, in terms of its relationship to the previous one or the one above, what have you. And if you're not paying attention,
you can make a mistake. So I'm going to leave it for later. And here at the top, build that up just a little bit. As I build up, sometimes I drag and sometimes I, I dab, dot, dot, dot. A combination of the both leaves you with a nicer texture. Looking at this space right here, there's nothing here, but actually I think it complements the area here. So I'm going to raise that serif out a little bit to a single point. Keep the weight really light. And almost done. I'm not sure how I want to end that serif there, so I'm going to leave that for later. Well, built up too much on that T. And now if you look at the stem of that T and the stem of the R, oh, I've hurt myself there. So now I have to build up all of the strokes in relation to that T. Well, I'll come back after I've touched up a little more. Let me show you how I load up this pointed nib. Browse. Like I said, a six. It's pretty sharp. I've sharpened it before. In order to to accommodate the smaller nib, I'm gonna add a couple more drops of water to the gouache. And that way it's going to flow a little bit easier. And the small nib needs a, a light touch. And it also picks at the fibers pretty mm, pretty seriously, so you have to be careful as you First part I want to deal with is some of these ascenders. So I'm going to look at this uh, R. There we go. My, my ink is not flowing so well, so I'm going to add some more water to the wash. Hmm. There we go. Okay, finally. 
Let's deal with this R first. Okay, so I've built up that way, and I need to determine what serif I'm going to put on some of these letters. So I'm looking here at the example and a lot of them are coming to a pretty sharp point. Somewhat, somewhat awkward. Um, I would call them an, an awkward serif because they're pointing down and um, I don't really like that style so I'm actually going to try to draw them out a little bit. that and I'm gonna make them big well that's that's how that's how Killian made his serifs was really really big really long pretty striking so that's what we're gonna do A lot of these areas where there's a connection. I'm looking at the connection here. Do I need to build up that? I'm going to build it up a little bit, but I think I've done too much on it. I don't want. I don't want this connection here to dominate the R, which it is doing. So I've messed that up. The T still needs more weight, and the left side is really raggedy. So I'm going to build up the right side just a little bit. Build up only a little bit, a little bit at a time. E and to avoid putting my hand in the ink, I need to draw this way. Still think there's not enough weight there. Okay, this double U needs more weight, but I'm going to build up the bottom here first. Bring that A down. Build up the outside edge. Um, If I build up this crossbar too much, it's going to dominate the letter. So I need to be very careful as I add just a little bit of weight. It's probably OK as it is, but I tend to, I tend to gravitate more towards monoline. I like a nice proportion in the letters. I don't, I don't like too much contrast, otherwise they begin to look really funky and unnatural, which might be the, the goal in some circumstances, but for the most part I'm looking for legibility as well as a pleasing design. And wrong letters aren't so much pleasing as they are fun. 
this E I really need to touch up. But I don't have a way to do that, so maybe the E will have to be fixed digitally. I don't have a problem with fixing things digitally, especially if it's going to be reproduced. What about posts on Instagram? Hmm. I don't often digitally edit my photographs before posting on Instagram because I don't care that much about posting on Instagram. So to spend that much time seems to be a bit of a waste. You can see the touching up is going to take almost as much time as drawing the letters. There's no problem with that. It's not because touching up itself, the act of doing it takes more time, but it's the act of seeing the letter thinking about the, the structure and the form and the lines. It takes more concentration. Or it should. The outside of the H is too smooth, but if I build it up, it's going to be too heavy. So I'll add a few places of contrast just to. I like the serif on that W. I want to pull this serif up just a little bit, like that. Bring this point down. Hope that's not going to be too much. Ooh, that's a big. Okay, that's starting to be too much. Okay, we're going to stop there. That's too much. In a lot of Killian's works, he has a serif on this point here, which is funky. Pretty funky, if you ask me. The W is too thin. this second stroke of the W, I'm building up the right side because, well, I see this down here, it needs to be built up, so I might as well combine the two. And also, I want to preserve the space between that W and the S. It's a little bit better. And the S. Well, the S and the O, both 
might be called a, the bane of my career. It doesn't matter how much touching up or, <laughs> or practice that I do. My hands have not found a comfortable rhythm when writing and drawing S's. But I think the same can be said for artists of any generation and of many years of practice that even though they've practiced a lot and their execution of an S or an O, the circular oval shapes, it might be close to perfect. I don't think there are many, some people say S's are fun, but I don't think anybody would enjoy writing a text with 50 O's or 100 S's. It's, they can be fun in terms of, well, the S and the O are unlike other letters. And that both have two bowls. The O has two bowls put together. So matching the two is necessary for, well, you don't have to have matching necessarily, but creating a, a harmony between the two is necessary, just as the S is, except the S, the two bowls are facing opposite of one another rather than together. Well, this W here still needs some work. And I'm afraid to build up this anymore. Because I liked it to start with. Okay. There we go. Hmm. The T. Just a little bit of weight here. Yeah. Okay. So what am I seeing? I still dislike the T. This T is not working for me. I do want to put in a... A little diamond here. How should I make the diamond? I think I will make the diamond. Let's do a filled diamond. Like this. Okay. Let's, let's make a, those big long serifs, just like Killian likes. I would have made that in another color, I think. Maybe another diamond here. Perhaps I should bring the sweet over to the right of the heart over to the left. But I was really going for to put the A here, and I, I've made this E, the leg of the E, too long, and so there's this really awkward space here. Otherwise, it's all right. <laughs> 